you know, the reality is that the people that are making these laws, obviously I don't know all of their individual experiences, but it seems to me that they really don't understand firearms very well. My understanding is that yesterday afternoon, there was a, um, there was a, the Senate Judiciary Committee had a hearing and they heard, uh, they heard arguments for and against three different bills that were before them. And there were 700 people is, is the number that I heard on the call. Correct. And of those, um, many were not able to speak because of the limits placed on them. But there were people, uh, there were eight people that argued for, for the bills, for the restrictions, for the gun control measures. And yet those, um, those eight were not all from Delaware. <laughs> what are you doing messing with our lives and the laws that affect us. There are people from New York City that are lobbying for, I mean, you've got, an, you've got a whole lot more people. I mean, you have more people in one borough of New York City <laughs> than you have in our entire state. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to come down here and mess with us? Yep. Can I also add that of those eight people who spoke, okay, so there's this group called Moms Demand Action who are so ill-informed and they think if they take everyone's guns, we're going to be safer, right? Because they just, that's what mm -hmm. they think. And so of those eight people, like four of them were Moms Demand Action, the same people that show up every single time. And one of them is like Kathy Jennings scheduler, the person when you need an appointment or a meeting with her, like they, like they don't even have people from the community and it's that are, that are, you know, supporting these, they have like five people, five people who want these bills. And it's so funny because today, Senator Lawson in the Senate meeting, in the Senate hearing, he held up a stack. He printed out all the emails for and against, and the ones for were like this and the ones against were like this. But do you think they care? No, and I'll tell you why. Because of the people who get them elected, the people who fund their campaigns, the people they made promises to should they get elected. I no longer believe this is about the people. I was naive enough to believe that for a time. I no longer believe that. And I also think the fact that we are from Joe Biden state, I think that's killing us. I think that's killing us that President Biden is from Delaware because we all know that Carney is going to run um, for Congress after this. We all know Kathy Jennings is gonna run for governor after this. And so it's just, you know, they're all gonna want That's that his blue wave. That's that blue wave. endorsement. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started. When I first started getting involved in, in this issue, I was gonna say fight, but I, I, if you know me, I don't like fighting. I don't like confrontation. <laughs> I, I figure he is so sweet and elegant and well spoken. I don't even know what she's doing hanging out with us. Like, where she's like our better half. <laughs> I strive to be more like yeah. you. I'm not even kidding. But you know, like I, I thought if they could just hear our hearts, if they could just see that oh, this is Lord. really about Lord. protecting women. I, you know, in my naivete, I just thought that that might make a difference, but it doesn't. They've, nice. they've made up their minds. Nice. They, they've yeah. decided it doesn't matter the unintended consequences. Let's, let's recognize that we all want to see an end to gun violence, but that's not going to happen when we're only punishing the innocent. Let's punish the offenders and deal with it from that, um, from that, um, angle not sit here and place more restrictions that are cost prohibitive on law abiding people that don't break that don't break the um resolutions that are the legislation that's already in effect that's i i'm not buying it anymore that it's about public safety it's not and i'm not buying anymore that they care about the people in their district because they don't well i wish you would tell us how you feel <laughs> uh, do, do you have a response to that? Um, man. There, there was some reference earlier. The um, I can't remember the exact number, seventy-five percent or whatever. Um, they often use that tactic. 
you know, it, it's, I don't want to say it's an intellectual sleight of hand. I think it plays on ignorance. You know, um, they use numbers. And for example, they'll say, you know, 85% of people support universal or support, yeah, universal background checks. But what they don't tell you is that the people who quote support it have no idea what mm -hmm. the difference between a universal background check and a regular background check is, you know, and we actually inform them as Kim um, have said that they've done. We inform them of what the specifics are, you know, um, then their, their support changes and you actually find out they're not in support. You don't have that number that you thought you had, but in order to, I guess, bolster or give the illusion of support, you know, they, they throw out these, these numbers that are, are just false, you know, um, and misrepresentations, uh, but that, that take the ignorance of the people for their benefit. Right. Um, and as far as the, the, the congressmen, the, um, the representatives, I think the issue, a larger issue is a lack of accountability. You know, they can do these things. Um, I was watching uh, Tim Cast yesterday and Ian had brought up how these representatives should have smart contracts. And what you ran on is exactly what we voted for you for. That's exactly what you should be held accountable for. And once you deviate from that, then we should be able to redress the grievances and get you out of there, you know, because you ran on this, this and this. And that's that's what we voted for, you know. And when you have a stack of paper that's four times as, as big as another stack, um, but you're willing to go with the minority, you know. For the sake of um, your 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 donors i think you should be able to you should be held accountable for that you know um we, they shouldn't be able to sneak this through and there'd be no repercussion the fact that people can do this and then say well i'm going to run for office you know um you shouldn't have the opportunity the fact that you've done this and that you went against your your that, that you went against the people that you're supposed to represent you should be you should be removed from office you know, because that's not the case, because a lot of people really don't, they, they have this um, position to where it's like, well, it's done now. What can I do? You know, I talked to a guy yesterday about the bills and he was like, well, it's going to pass anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, they feel defeated already. Yeah. Yeah. And that defeatist mindset right. doesn't help anything. Um, mm -hmm. If they have won this, quote, battle, we need to get even tougher, you know, in response and say, well, look. There's no reason why it should be acceptable that you went against the majority of the people you're supposed to represent. And it shows that you are not a representative of the people. You know, that's just that's just the guise by which you do your own thing. You know, um, you actually represent special interests.